On this week's episode, it's party time! First, Diggs went to Mickey's Halloween party last week and had a blast. Or did he? He'll tell you what was new this year and what was missing. Then I was fortunate enough to attend a Disney Parks blog meetup at DCA this week and had lots of Halloween treats. Find out which treats are a must-try and which ones can be left for the ghouls in another special fat time in the parks. Also, Thor's Hammer, Chef Oscar, Pirates, and more on this spooky episode of the Mouse Pirate Podcast. Hi, I'm Anthony. I'm Diggs. And welcome to Mouse Pirate, your source for Star Wars, Disney, and everything in between. This is the podcast where both empires collide. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Mouse Pirate Podcast. What's going on? Uh oh! The apprentice lives. What is this? You best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Bring up me, Hardy Joe. You never had a friend like me. Some imagination, huh? <laughs> made you look bye no not yet okay hey we are back and better than ever because uh tim chicka chicka fresh is back hello i heard you were missed and not by us by some fans of yours no it's it's you no you're no, the one that misses me wasn't me listen secretary i missed you <laughs> i just call you secretary it's no, that's uh, Anthony. He's the secretary hey, of the show. I'm not nobody's secretary. Just lies. I can't even secretary myself. <laughs> and I don't got nothing to do with no horse races. <laughs> oh. Yes, I, I did have some fans that were like, hey, Tim, why haven't you been on the podcast? You know, And then I said, well, it's Dick's fault because he hasn't messaged me. And I basically replied, say, you know when and what time we do this, so I don't know why we need messaging. Well, anyway, I don't want to just show up. Anyway, let's uh, get to our show, and uh, unfortunately, we're going to start with some sad, sad news. Of course, the horrible massacre over there in Vegas with this stupid ass who decided he was going to shoot people and uh, kill them because he uh, had nothing else better to do and was basically just, I don't know, stupid in one in his life anyway. Uh, I was really sad to hear what was going on, and when this first happened, I I really didn't understand what was going on. I just heard something shooting Vegas. I was like, okay, yeah, whatever, because I didn't know exactly what happened. Because I actually, I just woke up, I took a nap, and then I woke up, and I just heard shooting, blah blah blah. Okay, well, you hear that every day, right? So, it's Vegas. Yes. So you know, I didn't know what was going on until I actually watched the news. And I heard what actually happened, and then I'm like, holy crap, you know, this is just insane to know that someone's going to do something like this, and no matter what, I don't know if you can ever stop this type of behavior from people, because there's always crazy people out there who want to do things, and they don't care, because they just, I don't know, I, we don't know the reasoning behind this, but I can definitely say that he had two plans. One plan was to shoot up where this concert was going on, and the other plan was to kill himself. Because why would he set up cameras to see who's coming? So he knew what he was doing. It was all he planned this whole thing out, but it was really, really sad because, you know, I'm I'm not a country music fan, and I wouldn't have been there. But you know what? If it was a band that I liked, I would have been there. You know, because Vegas is not that far away from us and if it was any type of band that i liked i would have definitely been there you know i would have just like gone there and i would have been there those three days or whatever if it was something i liked so you know yeah um, elizabeth and i go to a lot of live live concerts and events and we were there in edc a couple of years back for or in vegas for edc a couple of years ago like your daisy carnival you guys don't know what that is and this is no different i think you know no, just because it's, it's a subsection of fans for like a specific kind of music 
Yeah, it's a it's a hard thing. Anyway. It is hard, and you're going, you're having a good time, and then there's like, I can't imagine that that situation. Yeah, and you know, I've been watching the news after it all happened, listening to basically all the eyewitnesses who were there, and just hearing what they went through, and it's just crazy to know that you know you're standing there, you hear gunshots, and you see someone next to you just fall to the ground, you know, and. It's also nice to hear that people are actually helping people, you know, instead of thinking of themselves, they're just like, okay, well, I'm going to pick up this person and take them. I don't know who this person is, but you know what? They just got shot and I'm going to take and help them. That's, you know, crazy. I mean, not crazy, but it's really cool to hear something like that. The, The situation is crazy. And then, like I said, you know, if it was a band that I liked and I would have been there, you start thinking, you know, what would I have done? You know, and... It's just, I don't know. It's just crazy to hear what happens. Don't want to really spend too much time on this because, you know, it's just too crazy to talk about, but we all know what happened. And I just want to mention a couple of the victims who were involved with this that has a Disney connection and is a cast member by the name of Carrie Barnett, who worked at the Pacific Wharf Cafe and Flo's V8 Cafe. Well, she was one of the victims and she, uh, was shot and unfortunately died from her wounds. And uh, there was another as well, right? You know what? I knew of another one, but now I heard of a third. So real quick, the other cast member was Jessica uh, Mylon, my lum, my limb. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I I I know she worked at Disneyland. I'm not sure where. And I was uh, as I was doing research, there was another person mentioned Bobby. Bradshaw, who was a broadcast tech, I'm not sure. Uh, I know that he was taken to the hospital. Not sure about the condition of him, but I'm, I heard that Jessica did pass away from her wounds. So that's two cast members who did pass away from uh, their wounds, and the other one was uh, hospitalized, but I don't have any information of his uh uh, how he's doing or anything like that. But, yeah, it's really sad. And uh, It hits home in the same way that Orlando, the Orlando nightclub shooting hit home for Walt Disney World right. employees because there was Walt Disney World employees that, I think it was one or two that had died in that situation. So, obviously, it, hit, it hits home now on our coast, and it makes it real for, our, for uh, the people at Disneyland that knew those individuals. Yeah, and uh, on uh, Monday... Bob Iger tweeted out a senseless, horrific act and a terrible loss for so many. We mourn a wonderful member of the Disney family, Carrie Barnett. Tragic. And, of course, at that time, he only knew of her. Yeah, it's just crazy that someone is so stupid and wants to go and do this because they have nothing going for their lives, I guess. That's the only way you can put it because if you had something going in your life and you everything's great, you're not going to go and try to shoot people up who are enjoying their lives at a concert. I don't know. I guess I'm just really mad, but what can you do, I guess? I don't know. But you know what? Our thoughts go to all those families of the victims, and and we also want to say thank you for all of those who helped each other out. That was really great. All right, so we're going to get moving on the podcast, and um, we didn't have a podcast last week because there was really nothing much going on, and we could have had a podcast with me and Anthony Throwing insult at, insult at each other. <laughs> you guys hear enough of that crap as it is. <laughs> or I have a whole podcast on stupid questions. <laughs> right. Well, isn't that kind of the... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so anyway, but besides nothing really going on, uh, I did go to the Mickey's Halloween party, and it was pretty cool. And um, some different things, I think, because you know me, I don't remember stuff. So hopefully Anthony could help me out on this. But I wasn't there. But you'll remember last year's. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, so the first thing I, I want to say is uh, I didn't get to Toontown because I had an anchor with me, and I couldn't get to the park when I wanted to get there. What does anchor mean? Someone's slowing me down. Oh. So basically Toontown was open from 5 to 7, so before the party, like we said, and I got there about... 
you know, so I, I, I couldn't get over to, Dirty. to do anything. You know, by the time you walk from Main Street to Toontown, you don't have much to do, and or you can't get much in, so whatever. I was also hungry, so my first stop was the Stage George Cafe, got corn dogs, and the party was already started. And right at 7 o'clock, I was there eating my corn dog and um, got to hear the Cadaver dance. So they started right at 7 o'clock. So got to hear them while I was enjoying my fat time. So that was pretty cool because we mentioned that that's one of the things you guys need to do is make sure to get over there and watch them. They're pretty cool. Lots and lots of fog on the river. Just crazy, full of fog. Really cool. And then after that, you know, we're just sitting there and then... I'm going to say, because they were on a 7, they went off about 7.20 around there. They're playing on every hour, and then 10 o'clock they come on, and then they come on at 10.45. But in between that is a little cavalcade with uh, Goofy, Pluto, Donald, Chip and Dale. Which is new. Which is new. And <laughs> it's kind of funny in a way because, I mean, they come out and they're just dancing to whatever music's on. You know, and they go around, they do the, the run the river, you know, they go up to almost to the um, dock and then they make their way back. And it's kind of funny because on the, on the way back, you just, they're doing the dance and they're just like, okay, you know, time, they're just doing the same dance. So they're just, they don't say nothing. It's just a dance. The music's playing, they're dancing. It's kind of like, what's the point of this <laughs> type of thing? It's good cool to see them, but it's just like, well, what's the point? They're not saying nothing. It's not a show. They're just dancing on a barge. So I, I thought it was kind of funny. But, yeah, I got to see that. Like I said, like uh, you said, it's brand new. I didn't get to do all the trick-or-treat locations. I didn't do Main Street. I didn't get to do the one by uh, Haunted Mansion. I didn't do that one. Was it true, all the things that we were hearing, that the cast members were being super strict on the candy, like one or two pieces? Yes, I got two or th- I lucky once I got three. And I heard they, that they were getting really mad if you asked for more. Do they hand them to you or do you get to like stick your hand? No, in? you can't stick your hand in the bin at all. No, you have to hold out your bag and they yeah. put it in the bag. They've always always been like that. Oh, but don't they have multiple types at each location? Yeah, if you want something else, you have to ask for it. Like a, if, instead of candy, you can get apples. Not all locations have apples, but... The, the but if I there's do. a mixture in the main bin, if they're only giving you two candies, then they're just going to give you, you're going to get any two that they grab. Yeah. As opposed to before where when they were giving you handfuls and you had a pretty good chance you're going to get at least one of everything. I don't know if they realized they were losing money. They candy. don't lose money. Well, why else be so picky all of a sudden? Well, I did hear from a cast member who works in the department that orders the candy that they only have a limited amount and basically, once they run out, they're out. So they're trying to make sure they have enough until Halloween. Unless, the only thing I can think of is that we've never gone this early. Well, yeah, yeah. That's and it's a thing product too. of being yeah. an early Halloween party rather than we've always gone like the third week and or the third week in uh, or something, the second or third week in October. So maybe it's a product of being an early party. But anyway, the, the cast member did say that they were going only going to have a certain amount they're going to give because they only have a certain amount backstage for the parties. I don't know how much they ordered. I don't know how they figure in. Well, this is my um, question. If they were to run out, say, 10 days before Halloween and they had four parties left, are you saying there more. just wouldn't be candy for those parties or realistically would they go buy more? they go to Smart and Final. <laughs> they go somewhere. Well, it's bulk there. <laughs> I mean, the the party ticket includes trick or treating and candy, right? Yeah. So if they were to run out for whatever reason, they're, they're not going to just do without. That's what I'm saying. That's a lot of freaking candy, though. Yeah, I th- would is. think that they wouldn't run out. That if they came within a certain amount, that people are constantly keeping some sort of inventory on that. And if they came within like a certain amount of time of the end, and they only have enough for a certain amount that they would put in order a rush order to get more. Well, maybe candy. that's what happened last time, and that's why they're being stingy this time. Could be. I mean, how many how many tickets do they sell? What, 10,000 tickets per event night or something? Maybe 15. Yeah. I will yeah. say between 10 and somewhere between 10 and 20. Yeah. If, if the park caps out at 70,000 people or so, realistically, then the Halloween party having any more than 15 or 20 would Yeah, I think it's about 15,000. Yeah. Anyway, I was uh, lucky enough once to get four pieces. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. 
because I walked, Whoa. I walked up there and I said, "Ooh, Sour Patch Kids," and then he just gave me candy. I was like, "Ooh, Sour Patch Kids," and then he went and grabbed the Sour Patch and put it in my bag. So, yeah, they were they were only given a few dirty, yeah, you know, whatever. But yeah, like I said, I didn't get to some of the locations. Usually, right there by the Rivers of America, they have that trail right there, and they always have a Peeps location. There's no Peeps. Peeps, Peeps. Now, I don't know if Peeps moved to a location I didn't get to, but I didn't get any Peeps, and I was really upset about that. I wanted my Peeps. No, oh, they're a dollar. Yeah, but, you know, they gave me Peeps there. and You had, like, your yearly not... Peeps fix yes. from the from Halloween my, party. Yes. So my... You never had to go out and spend the dollar. No, I did. Oh. Because you got the chocolate ones, and those are pretty good. <laughs> Do you have Peeps here? I'm craving Peeps. He doesn't like Peeps. I don't like Peeps. What do you What do you have? I don't have anything. Oh, I have some stuff when I pull it out. Whoa. Whoa. When I you pull don't it... have any Halloween candy? No, we it's I too early for that shit. I was promised candy here. I don't know what's going on with it's you. It's too early for that. See, I was smart and left the mine at home. Well, see, if I had <laughs> went to the Halloween, if I had went to Mickey's Halloween party, I would have had candy. Clearly not enough. Because <laughs> I've always had the last few, every time we've gone and everything, we always had enough where I was able to give some of the extra to my mom to actually hand out for Halloween. Right. But the, clearly, if they're only giving two or three pieces, there wouldn't have been enough for that. Well, there's still people who were getting a lot anyway, you know, going back and forth and hitting the lines over and over. We didn't do that. We just uh, went to each location, the ones we got to. And um, over at Tomorrowland, they have the dance party going on, which is a Pixar dance party. Same crap, you know, little kids jumping around, things like that. So it's nothing. I don't remember what it was last year. I don't remember either. It was something like an in-between because previously to that, it had been the Monsters U party. Yeah. But then they had some, they had just a DJ. It was just a DJ. Yeah. So, but it was pretty cool because they had, uh, Sully was there and uh, Mike, Mike was running around looking at people and uh, Doug was there. From up. Oh, the dog. From up. I don't know. I was thinking Doug. And uh, also, the uh, I forgot that kid's name. Do you know the kid's name? From up? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, the kid, kid from up. The kid from up was there. He has a name? I guess so. I'm sure. They all have names. Anyway, yeah, he was there. So pretty cool. Fredo. <laughs> it was cool to, uh, that the characters were out there, you know, dancing. But, yeah, it was, like I said, you have little kids there, and you're trying to get through, and you can't get through in that area. I'd like to get by now. Exactly. So, I mean, it was, uh, you know, we stood there for a little bit. We uh, went to go sit down and get reorganized because um, my bag was full of candy already. How full? Because when I was there the last time, I don't know if they let us grab our own candy or not. You can't. But uh, this was eh, three or four years ago. And uh, we... I won't say, I don't know how much anybody else ended up with, but I weighed my bag when I got home with me, you know, me and then without me on the scale, <laughs> uh, or excuse me, myself and then with, with and without the bag of candy. And I had over 20 pounds of candy. Oh, you, you don't need to tell us. We were there three, four years ago was when we first started going. And, and they, they, yeah, they, we, it was a lot of candy back then. Not but so it's much slowly anymore. gotten less and less every year. Two years ago, it was worse <laughs> because it rained. But last year, we still, we almost hit everything last year and we still, didn't get as much candy as what we did the first two years. But yeah, stingy, my stingy Disney. My bag was full, and I'm just using the Disney bag, the one they gave you. And so I had to go and uh, dump it out, you know, in my backpack. You're supposed to bring a pillowcase. I don't do that. To me, that's ghetto. So I don't need to do that. I have a backpack. So isn't that what you would do when you trick or treated in the neighborhood? I never home, took though? a pillowcase. I took oh. a regular Halloween. Like a pail. Yeah, which, yeah, me too. I was the pillowcase kid. <laughs> Not I mean, me. And and you say ghetto. You're like and I Charlie grew up, Brown. I grew up in Manhattan Beach, so it's by far not ghetto. Well, I consider it ghetto, and I wouldn't do it. I but anyway, it like I'm trying to, to say, because I, I was you know telling you about my story, that the bag was full. I emptied it t- into my backpack, like half the bag, and then we went to go hit the rest of the locations. We went to go hit Launch Bay, which was... So, uh, by the way, you've already kind of answered my question that there was no AP? No, there was no AP. I'll get to that in a minute. Nothing for annual pass holders? So, launch Launch Bay looked to me like it was less than last time. Less stations in there. 
What's how many would you say? Because there was okay. at least probably six to eight last time. There was one when you walk or up. Four or five. The one where we got our handful. Because there's that one on the, the ramp. The one where we got the handful, member. Yeah, that was year. on the ramp. Okay, so that's the one. And then they had one when you walk into Launch Bay with the doors, before the doors. Uh, and then you go to the right where Boba Fett is. And there was one there. And then when you exit... Boba Fett, that was one there. Then you go all the way around past the photo ops of Vader and whatever. And then there was one in the store. And then there was one at the end. That's six. I don't even remember them going inside of Launch Bay last year. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was all just that outside area. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think about that. I'm not sure. So I was it one it was. continuous line? Like, you once you got your candy, then you you walk twenty, thirty feet up, and you're in the next automatically yes. in yes. the next queue. So it's let maybe me just say more let me locations. Just, let now. me just say, by the time we went to Launch Bay, remember last year the switchbacks and the tape on the ground, right? They had all that, but there was no people in line. We just walked up. Oh, okay, that's so good. That was pretty good. So. Do you think it's that there's more locations and they're stingier about the candy because there's more places giving it out? I don't think there's more locations. I think it's the same amount. Hmm. There, the next location in Tomorrowland was actually Nemo, the line for Nemo, and that only had like maybe three or four. The last one was already out of candy, so they closed oh. it. That probably took the place of the one that used to go up to the monorail. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> And then the one before was over there by the exit of Autopia. But that one closed because it rained one year. Right. So then, of course, they had the one over Fantasyland by the theater, Fantasyland Theater. And then instead of, or they had the one by um, Dumbo. They yeah, had yeah behind one. Dumbo, yeah. Yes. No uh, location this year inside of the tavern. No, really. But they added those three locations. Oh, on the trails. On the trail right. okay, yes. for right every entrance to the new Galaxy's Edge. They're perfect for it. All had stations there, so that was really cool. So you had to, what, walk down and then loop back? Basically yeah. walk all the way down to the to where the door is. door is and then come back, yeah. And then what happened? It was pretty cool because they had some lighting going on and everything, so they actually decorated it so it looked pretty nice. Was the candy station... Towards, back towards the path, like you had to horseshoe loop around, and the, or was the candy station near the door? Well, the candy station would have been all along the whole thing. Yeah, all along the hole, and then you come back. They have more how, than one candy station. How many stations in each loop? Probably four or five. Okay, so last time I went to the Halloween party, it's been, again, it's been a few years, but there was less stations in the, you know what I mean? They didn't have as many, so they would give you more per. Well, back when the trail was still open, they would only have like one trail on the, one station on the trail, right? And at the end, they'd let you take like a handful if you want. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't remember that. I'm trying to think because, you know, before Big Thunder Ranch closed, that was a station in there. Oh, yeah. There was a big station inside yeah. Big Thunder Ranch. That's right. right. That's what I'm trying to remember. I don't remember if they actually had well, one. Well, maybe the there wasn't one on the trail then. Yeah. yeah. Cause it well, was inside there was one inside the ranch. Right, right. There was or one. Two or three inside the ranch. Well, it was actually inside of, uh, in front of uh, Big Thunder barbecue but yeah and then of course like i said right there rivers of america they had two well that's part of galaxy's edge i guess but two over there in critter country and uh as far as the ap thing all it was it was a photo op oh i saw the photo op yeah that's it yeah because they had a sign there said annual pass holder photo op blah 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 the set looked pretty cool but we didn't get into that we didn't go in there. I like, wasn't going to wait in line for that when I can get some candy. Uh, we watched the parade again, which was cool. And we saw the fireworks from its small world area. Yeah, I saw that they had some uh, new floats. The fire of the tray parade was a little bit different. What float was new? I'd have to go back and look. But I remember that I saw a video of the new parade, and it was different than last year's. Because I compared it to the uh, my pictures from last year. I don't remember new float. Well, I don't know if a new float, but they had new people walking. The, the what was new was uh, the headless horseman. Last year just came out. Right. This year they added Ichabod Crane. Oh, cool. That 
that was, I was like, oh, well, this is different. So that that is pretty cool how they added that. Yeah, the, the arrangement of the characters and some stuff that was walking was completely different. Oh, you know me, I don't remember. Yeah. But it, what I do remember is that we actually ran into Fancy Nancy. She was there with her family. We were chilling there. Like I said, I had a... Uh, I had to resituate my candy, and while I was sitting there doing that, Fancy Nancy found me and came over, talked for a little bit, and then uh, we uh, basically she was going to go find her peoples, and I told her I was going to be at the parade. I'll be there for the last parade because, you know, the first one, everyone's there. Second one, there's no one there, which is perfect time to go watch the parade. So, yeah, we, uh, like I said, watched the fireworks. Got ready for the parade. Fancy Nancy found us, and we're just sitting there chilling with her and everything. And yeah, it's pretty cool to see her and hang out for a, longer than last time we saw her, where it was hi and take picture and bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. So yeah, it was pretty cool. We hung out with her and her family. It was pretty nice. And um, yeah, then they left. I think they had to go to bed or something. I don't know. We stayed there till it closed, of course. But the the party was okay. It was cool. Didn't get to do as much as I wanted to, but, you know, I guess that's what happens when you carry an anger with you. <laughs> so next year is going to be interesting if it does go to DCA. What are they going to offer for entertainment? What is going to be the, this is why I'm going to this? Because I can tell you right now, candy is not worth it. You know, it's going to be... I've been saying that for all these years. Well, yeah, but we have entertainment. We have the Hellas Horseman. You have the fireworks. You have Cadaver Dan. You have all this cool entertainment. You can still do all of that except for the fireworks at DCA. Yes. You can have a... Possibly, if they can do it, they can have a new World of Color specifically for the... I would say they would do that. That's probably what they're going to do is what I'm guessing. What else are they going to say? Or what else are they going to have to say for me to say, I'm going to go? Because like I said, fire or the candy is not worth it. It's just candy. Well, the fireworks really are like the that's like the best fireworks show that they do. It is. So they had it. Yeah. Well, you watched it. We're talking about next year. Oh well, next year. Of course, presumably not paying the attention. show will be at California. Event. He's not paying attention because that's what we've been saying. Yeah, presumably... we're saying if they're going to have it at DCA, then most likely it would be maybe a new uh, World of Color. Well, that would yeah, that'd be. So I don't know. We have to see what is on the schedule for next year when they they'd have to that. do something. And the world of color programming is—I mean, they literally just have to plug the images. In. I know it's not quite that simple, but well, they still have to have stuff go out there and really have the stuff all loaded. Well, as far as pyro and stuff, yeah, goes, pyro, yeah, and but everything. but if it's not pyro, it can be. I know the programmer. It's easier. It's easier for them to program. They have to that. load the fire. Yes, yes, they have to load fire. The point is that it's easier for them to program World of Color with a, with a change than it is to well, yeah, put a yeah. new fireworks show. That is true. Yeah. So we'll see what happens then, but I was okay. Like I said, it was all right. It was fun. Okay. Like I said, we discussed a couple of weeks ago the possibilities of a uh, Halloween party at DCA, and we think that uh, what they've shown us so far is pretty uh impressive and that if they just want to go out with a couple more areas then i think that dca would work just fine for the halloween party all right real quick this is what i was talking about where you might be able to remember candy wise last year did they have swedish fish hell no they haven't had i don't recall swedish fish in any of the five or six years we've gone i don't think so either i got i got one of those or maybe a couple of those whoa um, cookies and cream, Hershey's bar. Maybe a couple. Maybe because I don't remember that. Maybe last one. Year either. Maybe one. I can't say for sure. Yeah, I don't remember that really. Cause no. I, would, I mean, I would have remember. I've loved cookies and cream, so I don't think we got that. I don't last think year. so. If it, like I said, before. if if we got it, it was like one. Let's see what else was there. That was um, you know, you got the regular Snickers. Baby Ruth. I was hoping for three. Sour Patch Twitter. Kids. Yes, yeah. Sour Patch Kids. You know, I got to try a uh, little trip I took over the weekend. I got to try the new uh, Tropical Sour Patch Kids. I think they're by far the best one. I got to try those. The ber- berry is really good because they don't have any, like, greens or yellows in them. It's right. All, 
it's all like red and yeah, purple I think type I've had flavors. That one. But the uh, I can't eat too many of the berry flavored, but the the tropical, oh, they're so good. Well, like I said, I will. You have said to they try didn't that. have any carrots, right? They had carrots. Oh, it was apples they didn't have. They had apples. Okay, because when you I first asked you, you I asked you about one of them, and you had only seen one of the two. I think yeah. I asked you about carrots, and you had only seen apples, or vice versa. Yeah, the carrots weren't till later. Okay. All right. So for those of you who haven't went to your Mickey's Halloween party yet, make sure you uh, take the tips that we gave you. Get there early. Check out. The, if you guys are into the photo ops, check out the villains on Main Street first, and then head over to Toontown or the other way around. Since Toontown opens at 5 o'clock, you can head over to Toontown, get some candy, head over to Main Street uh, before the party starts or whatever. Do it that way, but the lines for the picture are pretty long. That's why I didn't do the APU picture. That's all they have, huh? Just the Main Street, huh? I think that's all they had. Of what? Picture wise, photo ops? I think so. That's kind of I don't know. Yeah. I mean I would rather have more photo ops in different locations, but whatever. But yeah, hurry up and get over there. Don't take an anchor with you and uh have fun. Get candy. Don't forget to bring a backpack. Or, sack. or a pillowcase. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm sure many of you heard that. Chef Oscar Martinez retired this past Wednesday after more than 60 years of service to Disneyland. That's crazy. That's awesome. Longest tenured Disneyland, Disney cast member, Disney Parks cast member. I guess that includes both parks when they put it like that. I guess so. Oh, well. Because I wonder, would you say longest tenured Disneyland cast member if it was just Disneyland? It specifically says the long, longest tenured Disney Parks cast member. So I would assume that means that he's been working at the parks longer than anybody in any of the parks. Right. I would say so, yes. So well, that's pretty he, impressive. Disneyland's the only park that's been around long enough to have that make sense, right? Well, that is true. I think they say Disney Parks as opposed to Disney cast member, though, because there's there might be a couple of people in Imagineering or corporate that have been around. Maybe right. that yeah. long. Well, they can get their own article. <laughs> so Oscar began working at Disneyland on December 29th, 1956, a year after the park opened. And that's really cool because, you know, we've talked a lot about how this Imagineer has worked with Walt, new Walt, da-da-da-da. Well, here's another cast member who had new Walt. Walked with Walt, talked with Walt, you know, so that's really cool to know, you know, to have someone like that in the still working at Disneyland, you know, that's, that's really cool. I, I think that's tight. I, I never met Oscar and, uh, I know Michael met Oscar and Michael went over to, and if you guys didn't know, uh, Oscar worked at the um, Carnation Cafe, right? And so Michael was there and Michael told me that basically he was looking at the menu and there was two things that he wanted to get, but he couldn't make up his mind. So he picked one. I'm not sure what, which one it was. I forgot. And then uh, Chef Oscar came out and, you know, went over there, talked to Michael, blah, 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 blah. And saw what he got and uh, told him, oh, well, you should have got this, which is the other thing that Michael wanted that he didn't pick. So... Yeah, Michael's like, dang, dirty. I didn't get what Chef Oscar recommended, but he's going to get that next time he goes there. But, yeah, I didn't get to meet Oscar. I know a lot of people have met Oscar because he comes out, like I said, and talks to the guest when they're dining. And, um, well, Carnation is just no, no place that we've ever really gravitated towards. It's really hard to get in there. Bomb meatloaf. Well, there are lots of food in there is bomb that I've wanted to try and I know is bomb, but fried pickles. It's, it's just really, yeah, it's hard to get in there. And most of the stuff that's in there is stuff that this guy is not really into. Probably. Uh, yeah. Cause I don't like a burger or anything. Well, <laughs> you don't like burgers. That's what you just said right uh, now. I don't know. Do you not like meatloaf? Well, that probably not. I saw on that Wednesday, they actually had a ceremony for him over at the opera house. I didn't get an invite to that. 
I was really disappointed that they didn't think about me, you know. But anyway, I um I saw pictures and things what was going on. So, you know, basically, you know, Oscar's on the stage. Was that a press event or is it mainly like uh parks uh, park people? I think park people, maybe some press in there, I I don't know, but there was just, you know, a bit of some ceremony, you know, thanking him and things like that. So I think that's really cool that they honored him. And, of course, if they didn't honor him, that would have been dirty. But, yeah, Chef Oscar retired after 60-plus years working for Disneyland. All right, so it says here, Oscar plans to travel, visit with family, and just relax in retirement, which is always a good idea after working so many years. But we uh, we just like to say congratulations, Oscar. Awesome job, and uh, enjoy your retirement. All right, so on Tuesday, Anthony over here went to the Disney Parks blog meetup for Halloween time over at DCA. Now, of course, those are the ones that they uh, announce, and you have to sign up, and if you're not there, sign up within a second of a release. You're not getting in. This one's especially because there was only 150 people. Damn. Which means that if there was 150 people, that means there was only 75 People signed up because it was you and a guest. So it was like, whoa. It was uh, very similar, I believe, because it wasn't actually all of Halloween time at DCA. It was kind of they split that up because they had that party just last week or a couple weeks ago. They had the Guardians one. Yeah. Remember? And that was specifically for the Guardians, the Monsters After Dark. <laughs> it was specifically for that. So... I mean, they had the one little special party for that, which I'm guessing was also about 150 people, maybe. Probably. So they had that, and then they had this one, which, like I said, I barely had enough time to see the notification and then sign up. And then once I was done signing myself up, it was already full by the time I went back to sign anybody else up. Yeah, that's was dirty, because uh, they probably could have squeezed in a little bit more people over there. They could have squeezed in a lot more people, because <laughs> it was so nice being in... Uh, there in the land with nobody around. So how was it? It was cool. What was going on, basically? Before he starts, I had another friend there, and she posted uh, that it was by far the best event they've done. yet. Because only 150 people there. <laughs> Which I was telling Anthony before, I think that's just too little. Like, you know, they're going to run all three rides alone. They should have uh, 300 people or 400 people yeah. or something. Doesn't 150 seem like not enough? No. It seems just fine to me when I'm there in the area and there's hardly anybody around. It was sure nice. That's all I got to say. But yet strollers in your photos. Hey, yet strollers in my photos, which I'll get to. Well, I guess I could just mention that real quick. Because uh, I don't know if you guys recall, uh, what was the last episode, uh, which had strollers in the title because of this, was that they had the strollers, people had parked strollers all the way over there in front of the uh, in front of the sheriff's office in, in uh, Cars Land. And you couldn't take pictures because they had it nice and decorated. Well, I go to the party last night and 150 people. What do I see? Three strollers parked in front of the freaking sheriff's office. I'm like, dude, you can't even go to a, a, a super limited party without having strollers in front of your shit. I do have to agree. If they're going to take the time to decorate something specifically. They should also make sure that they're not parking anything. Really, it shouldn't matter what it is in front of the stuff people are going to want to take pictures of. Yep. So it was cool. We got signed up, walked inside. They kind of uh, escorted, like, in a couple groups since there were still guests milling about in the park. They kind of escorted everybody in a, in a first group, in, a, in groups, back to Cars Land. So we got back there. They had given us a voucher, which just said, take this voucher to Flo's and we'll give you a treat box. So we go over to Flo's. We go in there. We give the uh, voucher, and we get a... Pretty nice, big little treat box. One of those little, like, uh, Pentagon-shaped boxes yeah. or something. Like, you would get a sandwich or something in. Oh, and this was called the Howl, the Hall Oween Meetup. Because that's the whole thing with uh, in Cars Land is Hall Oween. So we got this uh, little box, and it came with the chocolate bat cookie, the mini candy cone pie, and the spooky cone macaron. Yeah. So I'll get to those in a minute because I'm just gonna we're gonna do a big old fat time on all this stuff all at once. So that was cool. I was like, oh cool, this is a lot of food right here. I mean, that's like just in this container was like what ten dollars worth of food, probably yeah. 
mean, because what the macaron itself is probably like what four or five bucks. Uh, I was like, I think it's like maybe three something. How much is the cookie? I don't know offhand. So I mean, like I was saying, eighteen dollars. <laughs> all I know is that there's definitely over ten dollars worth of food here in this box. So that was cool. Oh, before we even get over there, I was actually going to talk about in last week's episode if we had had one. I had tried the green apple spell lemonade with the with the bloody drops or whatever it's called. That's over there at uh, Smoke Jumpers Grill. I had actually went over there and and specifically buy it, bought it, and uh, it was really good. Happy with it. It's got a nice flavor. I would definitely get it again. I definitely think that you'd probably want it. But anyways, as we get into the uh, mm-hmm. as we're walking down the street in Cars Land, there's hardly anybody around, which is nice. All of a sudden, we're like, there's people come up, start walking out. I think they were just walked out. And there's a bunch of like uh, people walking with trays, and they got all these, they got drinks on there, and they start handing us drinks, and it's that drink. <laughs> I'm like, well, of course, after I just bought one the other day, <laughs> now they're giving them out for free. I'm like, fine, I'll take some more. It's fine with me. At least I know I like it already. <laughs> so, anyways, got that. Went over and got the box with the with the with the uh, goodies in it. And so they had that. They had a little. Uh, they had a little. Um, Sad little DJ set up there next to uh, <laughs> Ramon's. Yeah, but the 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 DJ was like on a little riser, and he had a he had more lights around him than he <laughs> what he really needed. <laughs> and they had the they had a big old uh, they had the they were doing the uh, lights and sound on the on a computer like off to the side, but yeah, he was playing music, and they had uh they had what's his face come out, uh. DJ is that his name on oh, the car, the car. Yeah. Yeah. The car DJ came out and he went over there and I wasn't really paying attention to what he was doing because I was trying to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't really, I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't really care what he was doing. I know he came over and he probably did his usual thing, but maybe without all the girls and people that are usually around with him. But I know he came out. The DJ kept trying to get people to come over and dance, but nobody was dancing. Oh. <laughs> um, he just, he was playing music because he's trying to play music that doesn't really go with anything and then in the area of cars land they're playing the music that they normally play for mickey's halloween party with uh boo to you and monster mash and all that stuff so you got that playing you got this guy playing trying to play his stupid usual dj music that they always try to make us ever all listen to you know of course we heard uh uptown funk all right because you know they can't have they can't have a Thing without playing that at least right. once i didn't even know that the rides were all open until i had the guy the dj announces oh the rides are open everybody blah 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 go on the rides he said Good. blah 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 yeah he might as well have so everyone goes on the rides and there's no one on the street i don't even know if there's anybody on the rides remember there's only 150 people there to begin with yeah and then everybody's just kind of milling about yeah i mean they could have all been on on uh racers i guess because it didn't it just never seemed like there was really that many people walking around I don't know how many people actually just showed up, got their goodie box, and then left. They might have gotten the boogity box and then went over. Uh, I'll get to it in a minute. There was some stuff at uh, Cozy Cone they were also giving out. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just didn't seem like there was really that many people there. It's uh, It is possible that people got their stuff and then left. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we went over to Luigi's, just got right on. And then uh, Mater's, we got right on Mater's. So, I mean, it was pretty cool. I liked it. Lots of goodies, uh, which is mainly the thing I'm going to talk about is uh, just the fat time part of it. Because that's, I would say, 90% of what this party was seemed like it was just a a mini. It was a way hoping. It's uh, it's Disney hoping that at least uh, 75% of the people that signed up for this party are bloggers, basically, is what it seems like to me. Because it seems like having a press event without it being a press event. Was it available to anyone? Yeah, anybody could have. you, know, you just have to be somebody who's paying attention and and signs up. You just have to be somebody who's who's following the Disney Parks blog. I don't even know if it was. I don't even know if it was posted on the on the Facebook Parks blog. Well, because you're there, you, you do the podcast, right? The other person I know, she's. Uh, I, I guess you'd call her like an influencer. She's got a really popular Instagram. In fact, most of the photos that you see of, um, like when the rose gold ears came out. When the um, copper, sorry, copper ears came out, uh, the new Small World 
um, Starbucks mugs, the new DCA mugs, all the photos that get circulated. Well, it's just coincidental heard. that I'm a that I that I'm a uh, podcaster. I mean, I just I just all I need to do all you need to do is have notifications set up for Disney Parks blog, and for all the ninety nine percent of the Disney Parks blogs uh posts that you don't care about there's the one percent that is a hey sign up for this special party yeah and if you just if you happen to get the notification and you're able to click on it right when it happens you get lucky and you might get into a, an event or something it just happened that i was actually fi- i missed by like t- two minutes the uh the monsters after dark i just missed that one actually so i could have gone to both if i had been locked quicker so, I mean, like I said, the thing I figure is that maybe they figure that the only people that are that have notifications on or are able to sign up for these things really fast are majority, like, people who have blogs and actually pay attention to the, to the Disney Park blog, like, hardcore. So, if that's what they're hoping for, they're hoping that people that show up to the, to the events are people that can take pictures and get the information out there. That's why they have their whole thing on, you know... Be sure to share your photos using these hashtags. and Well, that's what they want, right? Well, yeah, they want you to get the information out. I mean, they're using you as advertising. Like, you really think they want 150 Joe Schmoes to show up to a party and give them a bunch of free food? They're banking that the that majority of the people that are showing up are people that are going to share the photos and share the things about the food and get interest in it. So that was really cool. Uh, also, like I said, they had a couple things over there at Cozy Cone. I will get there in a second when I start on the bat time segment. Like I said, over there at Flows, where we got the the freebie box, they had a really cool spread of. Uh, they had a huge, huge like three tables set up where they had all of the Halloween treat offerings displayed oh, for everybody just to see. Displayed though, not no. Not they were just for no. They weren't available for purchase, but time. they were all. Just a display, really, really fancy display of just all the stuff, including the Oogie Boogie popcorn bucket, all the different treats, all the different desserts, cookies, chur- the churros. So anyway, so yeah, they had the display all set up with all the different treats. It's all just stuff at DCA, and it's, it has an explanation, and then it tells you where it's at. Yeah, this is actually something I was uh, discussing with Diggs, that this is very similar to something that they did at a, an AP Days uh, last year where they had, I think it was all of the, uh, was that also Halloween? Yes. So that was AP Days, like in September or something, and they had all the, they were showing all the Halloween stuff. Yeah, but it was, was coming. It, it was just pictures, yeah. right? Yeah. It was just, they had a big board, and there was just a bunch of pictures. Uh, we, I remember we talked about it on the podcast, but this is this is a much more interactive and cooler way where there are actually pictures and actual examples of the food for you to take pictures of. That was really neat. All right, so uh, before I start on the fat time part of it where I talk about all this goodies and stuff, I uh, just want to also mention that we also got this cool goodie bag <gasps> that they gave us. That guy. It's a uh, one of those uh, shoulder sacks. Like we talked about, you can use for trick or treating. It's a tote bag. Yeah, it's not a it's not a, a cinch sack, but it's a tote bag, which could be used for trick or treating. It's really nice uh, quality, Careful, kind of. Mater can bite you. Yeah, yeah. it's got uh, it says Halloween time on, it, and it's got Vampire Mater on there, so it's a uh, real official. It's even got the Disneyland Resort logo down here, because you know, just in case nobody knew what the, what it was. But uh, inside, we got. Uh, an actual thing of Halloween gummies from the Disney that they sell inside the Disney parks. These are what? How much do you like? Eight bucks. Eight bucks. Would you say? <laughs> it's the uh, comes in. It's in the little the little. Uh, it doesn't have the price on there. No, the price is not on here. <laughs> not on the bottom. Surprisingly, no, it's not. <laughs> this is before they put the prices on. Yes, them. exactly. But uh, they, I know they have these on the counters and stuff. It has some of the new artwork from this year. It has many. Uh, as a witch on the broom, and it looks like a little shopping bag, but it's got uh, some gummies inside. Ooh! Which uh, Tim was asking earlier about some uh, about some uh, goodies. Well, I got, got these. these to share. Yeah. Oh man! Now, well, I know I didn't get now... these to share. They came in with this. 
Well, yeah, but you're going to share them with us. Well, yeah, because I want you guys to see. But they all got their little uh, like cats and brooms and stuff. I think <laughs> I think what we yeah, should do is, is put them in a bowl. Oh well, I don't see any reason why to waste a bowl. I don't see why do either. Just open the bag and let's go. <laughs> and then I got two. Uh, what? Oh, that's cool. You had two. one there. What? You had one at the party. What? One of these. No, they came with two. It came with two of these. Oh, okay. I bag. thought maybe you'd had one at the party, and those two were going to be for us. That's oh no, you no, were no, thinking, no, no, right, no. Diggs? You guys can split one though, because I'm not a big fan of these. Ooh, I mean, you see. know, you know the story about the uh, Diggs. You He's were not going to eat the gummies right now. <laughs> Give it to me. Oh well, get, you you can open them. I do want to eat. The I mean, obviously, you know the story about the uh, the rice krispie treat from <laughs> from the very. Yeah, I still have it up there in the cu- in, up there. It's the rice krispie treat from the very first Halloween Mickey's Halloween party in 2000. Uh, you still have it. Twelve yeah. or thirteen, I think. So you'll have this one in three or four years too. Right. Well, I mean, if I don't eat it, I probably I might let somebody eat that one. I don't know. Yeah, those gummies are pretty good. But look at they gave us this. It was in there. I don't understand why it's in this little uh, bag, like as if we're at a, um, like as if we're at a, a baby shower or something. <laughs> it's a little purple, one of those little purple clear bags. What do you call these kind? Of, what would you call this kind of bag? Like a mesh? What mesh? It's the same kind of bag that the special key came in for the Tower of Terror. Oh, Dubai is it? Event. That's funny. So it's probably leftovers from that then. So yeah, it's like a mesh bag, but it reminds me of when you go to like a like a uh, baby shower or wedding shower or something, and they put little, little candies inside. Yeah. And inside is a really cool uh, flashlight that says Disneyland Resort on one side, and there's bats on the other side. <laughs> Let's see it. Whoa! Oh, good lord! <laughs> you wanted to see it? Sorry, no, no. Sir. The freaking brightest little light I've ever seen. There you go. You get it too. <laughs> no, that's really cool. Pretty bright. <laughs> And uh, finally, because, you know, they want to make sure that they get their brand out there. Oh, that stupid logo they just got came up with. You got a shirt that you won't fit in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, none uh, of us would fit in that shirt. Yeah. And you know what they gave? They were they were actually directing when you went up there to get your bag. They directed you to different people. And I didn't really understand why. Oh, can you go see so-and-so? Uh, and then they told uh, Rebecca, go see so-and-so. And then now make sure you go see so-and-so. So I think different people had different sizes because she oh. ended up with a small. And then they gave me, which was probably the largest size, which was a large, which will fit nobody sitting at this table. Well, I don't hey, know, I could squeeze into that. You might be able to squeeze into it. It might look a little uh, frat guy. guy, little shirt. <laughs> Not happening. But the, sh- the, the shirt is the actual new logo that Disney Parks blog came out with, which looks really stupid. Yeah, I mean, I like these kind of logos, but not for the Disney Parks blog. It does I just say it on the side, at least. Yeah, it says Disney Park blog on the, on, the, on the arm. Yeah, it's a free shirt I'll never wear <laughs> we with could, a uh, stupid logo on it. Maybe. I'll probably see if, uh, if it'll go on eBay. That's what I was about to say. eBay or maybe if people would actually like email us. I know I'm, I'm harping on this again. But uh, if they'd actually email you, know, you could try giving it away. But they won't, so you'll just eBay it. I will eBay the bag that the uh, gummies came out of. <laughs> yes. I will give away. You guys can get that it's bag. With... Ripped. It looks like teeth, ripes, teeth rips. I don't know. Are you hungry? Well, they are. It's time for Fat Time in the Parks. So, yeah, now on to the Fat Time itself, which, like I said, that party was basically just a giant Fat Time party. I know this guy right here. Would have loved to have been there. Yeah. I really feel bad because it definitely was right up his alley with it being almost all food items. So we're going to start with the the little container that they gave us right away. The chocolate bat cookie. Ooh. Now we can all speak about that and talk about that real quick because I did bring a sample home and let these guys try it just because I could not finish it because it was so, so rich. Let's just say that uh, it's called a cookie. But would you call it a cookie? No. What would you call it? A brownie. Like a thinly sliced brownie? Yeah. I would agree, because it does have the texture and and richness of a brownie. Anthony was handing me the cookie <laughs> so I can take a piece out of it. So I'm the way I'm trying to break it was like trying to break a cookie cookie, thinking it's going to snap, but it didn't snap. It just kind of got mushed because I, the pressure I put on my finger. So my finger went through the cookie, and basically... It was really, really soft, like a piece of cake or brownie, 
but it was really good. And, um, yeah, it was rich. It was really, really rich. Yeah, I ate about a half of it or just over half of it, and I'm like, I can't eat. Between all the other stuff going on that I was eating, I'm like, I just can't eat any more of this. So I wrapped it up in a napkin. I brought it home with the intention of eating it with milk. But then I was like, well, let me go ahead and let these guys try it so that way they can get a sense of this uh, super rich, crazy bat cookie. <laughs> but, yeah, so if you guys uh, don't don't buy these bat cookies that they have this year, expecting them to be like the bat cookies of old. Right. They're it's, not. Uh, and you don't want, if you're somebody who doesn't like having uh, rich like brownies or cookies without milk, make sure you do not get this uh, this bat cookie without any kind of uh, milk or hot chocolate or something. Now, the mini candy cone pie, I didn't really care for it that much. I this It has like three layers of, uh, what would that be? Frosting. Frosting. <laughs> had three layers of colored frosting. Way too much frosting. I mean, you guys know in the past that I've complained about the amount of uh, whipped cream that they give me with, with funnel cakes. Well, that's the equivalent of that with frosting. It's like all frosting and then down. It has like a it has like a uh, a custard cup, and underneath all that frosting, in the center on the custard cup is what we figured was some sort of custard slash pudding slash banana something. <laughs> it was it was weird. I did not like the whole dessert as a as a whole. Uh, she destroyed it for some reason because she destroys all foods. I tried to give her mine. She kind of ate a little bit of it, but she had already destroyed herself with the other one so that one kind of yeah but uh that one i don't recommend unless you want a lot of uh unless you like like a lot of frosting so yeah that one was pretty crazy now the uh spooky cone macaron is the one that i had mentioned when we were talking about the uh when we talked about all the treats and we did our little segment on the treats a couple weeks ago it's the one who that's uh, has uh, candy corn inside. Ew! Uh, Literally in between the cookies. Yes, it's in between the middle of the macaron. Basically, the macaron itself is shaped like one of the cones from Cozy Cone with the with the with the face on it. But it's it's actually like a macaron. The 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 crust on it almost like comes apart. And it's real flaky, and the crust itself is really nice on the macaron itself. But like I said, the center is like a uh, like a like a, a mint cream with candy corn. So I'm like, well, I'm getting this for free, so I'm not gonna let it waste. And I try some of the crust. I'm like, ooh, this is really good. And then I try some of the the mint cream. I'm like, ooh, this is really good. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I just start. I try to. I try to separate, and I just start <laughs> picking all of the candy corn out, and I managed to eat through the whole entire thing, just picking out all of the bits of candy corn. By the time at the end, I just have all this cream color, cream covered candy corn sitting in the little tray. Was it full size pieces? Yeah, they, actual were full they size pieces of pieces. No, 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 they were actual pieces of candy corn. So you basically got rid of the best part. No, I got rid of the worst part. What are you talking about? Candy corn is the devil. Just like foosball. Exactly. Candy corn is made by the devil. What would be the purpose there? I don't know. To destroy your mouth and your taste buds and everything that's in it. Because candy about? corn is gross. Candy corn is crushed up hopes and dreams <laughs> that have been remolded. <laughs> what about circus peanuts? Oh, no, those are gross, too. Yeah, I had to think about what those were for a second there. No, those are gross, too. Those are those little... You know what circus peanuts are, right? Those little orange look like a candies giant, that look like, like a, a peanut. peanut. It looks like a giant peanut. It's orange. Oh, ew. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Gross. They're that, that big. Yeah, yeah. No, they're disgusting. Yeah. They're made by the other devil. Rebecca and I are going to get a big bag of circus peanuts. We're going to sit on the couch and play video games, and you're going to have to watch us. Handle that shit. I'll eat something <laughs> else. <laughs> uh, I got stuck on circus peanuts and candy corn when I was like uh, in like my teens. Why? Free. I don't know. It was just like, you know, whenever I would go to the store for, you know, candy, I would get like a bag. Well, then of you need to try peanuts. this because you'd probably like this. But 
I want I want another one, but without the candy corn in it. Seriously, I want to try it without the candy corn. I want and one. And without having to go through all the trouble. I would actually, I liked it so much, I would go through the trouble of picking the candy corn out again, believe it or not, that that's how good that. Now I want to try it. You need to try it. You need to. <laughs> See, I want If one. anything, you need to get it and then just eat the crust, eat the uh, macaron. <laughs> and then. Would you have the candy corn? No. No. Well, you'd pick it out. It's the devil. It's... And I like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I I would like to try one. I just don't want to pay for one. Like I want to do like a Anthony got to have it free at the party situation. Oh, the candy corn is covering the whole entire. It's like there's like it's, a whole layer. It's of not it. like in the picture where it looked like the candy corn was just around the edges. Remember the picture that was posted? It just looked like the candy corn was around the edges. Well, that's not the case. The candy corn is inside the whole entire thing. So over there at. Uh, Cozy Cone, they had two stations set up, and at the first station, they had what's called the Junkyard Jamboree Mix. Cool. Chicka Chicka Mix. Yes, exactly. Uh, which is basically, it's the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> it's basically just popcorn with M&M's, Ooh. pretzels, Ooh. chocolate covered, something else. Why would you ruin popcorn and M&M's with Pretzels. Pretzels are bomb. What are you talking about? Not pretzels are better than M&M's. Hey, this is the guy who likes candy corn. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They had, they had, uh, it was funny because she bit into one not knowing what it was. They had those chocolate covered coffee beans. Oh. Yeah, that's what the red is. It's oh. a chocolate covered coffee bean. Yeah, then they had chocolate, they had regular pretzels, chocolate covered pretzels, and then peanuts. This is basically, that's what the junkyard Jamboo remix is is that what's it's, on top? Oh, that's what I'm getting to. That's what I want to know. That's about. what's next, and that would be the quote unquote pumpkin spice churro. Well, let's just say it's a churro. <laughs> it's definitely a churro uh, with a bunch of brown sugar on it. With a but not brown sugar, but brown sugar, not actual brown sugar, but brown colored sugar Ooh. with little stars and little and little uh, ghosts. But that. Is there's no there's no pumpkin spice flavor in that. It's just a brown. It's just a churro with brown sugar with brown colored sugar. But it doesn't taste like pumpkin spice at all. Both of us ate one, and both of us neither of us got any kind of pumpkin spice, much less pumpkin or or spice. It just tastes like a churro. It, there was nothing special about it at at all whatsoever. Well, that just that just bursts my bubble. Yeah, well, it should because I mean I'd be disappointed. I'd been like. If I paid for that, being promised pumpkin spice, I would go to freaking Chamber of Commerce or City Hall and be like, uh, your pumpkin, your, uh, I was in the impression there'd be a uh, pumpkin spice flavor in this churro, and there is not. Here, I saved you the churro butt. Try it yourself. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, the pumpkin spice churro is not. Is it spiced? No, it's just a <laughs> pumpkin. It's just a churro with brown sugar on it, with brown colored sugar. <laughs> it's so, messy. It makes at first more... when you said brown sugar, I was like, "Ooh," but then you said, "No, brown colored sugar." It's like, like, it's oh. just like the red and the green, yeah, and it's colored, not the actual it, brown sugar. Right? It's the just like that sounded good. The sour watermelon was good. That yes. one and the uh, that one and the lemon one from the pirates. Oh, the lemon one was the best one. Those are the only two that have actually had the flavoring. The, the 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 lightsaber ones. There was no flavoring. It was just color. Yeah. What was the other one? The other one is the s'mores. But oh, the s'more one. Cracker. That one's just. Would you have been? That one doesn't even really have flavor. Would you have been less or more disappointed if instead of pumpkin, if it tasted like lemon? Well, at least it would have tasted like something. That's my answer too. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just stupid that they would advertise it as a pumpkin spice churro if it doesn't. Don't if you if you want to try the churro with the hope of it tasting like pumpkin spice, don't do it because yes. it doesn't taste like pumpkin spice. Do you think they just forgot that element? Because pumpkin spice no. is something that's the pumpkin flavor is something that's easily replicated. They it's in everything, right? Yeah, I don't know. It just it doesn't taste like pumpkin or spice. It just tastes like a churro. If I closed my eyes and didn't know it had brown colored sugar on it. I would just think I was eating a regular old churro from Main Street. Without so, cinnamon. Without cinnamon. Overall, I really enjoyed it. It was a, uh, not only was it nice having the, uh, 
area to ourselves basically with hardly anybody around it was nice to be able to just sit down and eat this stuff and go through it real slowly and then know that we can just get up and go check out one of the rides or take pictures without people in the way or i got a really nice picture as we were leaving of the uh that i showed the, this guy these guys of uh the courtyard over there in front of carthay with a nice uh, reflection of all the cool purple lighting over there it looks really nice and yeah it was cool i liked it i'd like to go to more of these events i really make makes me more wish i could have gone to that guardians monsters after dark event <laughs> can't wait till he doesn't do that anymore monsters after dark and i'll give you that one tim after dark <laughs> all right so one other little bit of fat time that uh, i haven't tried yet but i'm going to all right, well, Tim opens a treat, that uh, Rice Krispie treat that I brought for uh, him and Diggs to share. I've encountered an issue. I've checked the packaging, and it says there's only one serving here. Oh, man. Okay, well, I guess you guys have to battle that out like <laughs> uh, like Star Trek the, in the episode. Who's, who's, who's the Gorn? One more uh, fat time item. I haven't actually tried this yet. Can't wait to go. Actually, I don't really care about the drink as much, but it's what you get, <laughs> what you can get with the drink, and that's over there at Award Wieners. You know, of course, over there at Award Wieners, they always got their little themes and drinks and fried bananas and other <laughs> weird crap. But yeah, they got over there. They got what's called the Lightning Pop, which is supposedly a red cream soda drink of some sort, slush, slush a red cream soda slush of some sort, which sounds weird. I don't know what red, what's red mean? Is that, uh, the, is it just red? Is it a just red cream soda? Maybe it's a Star Wars thing. Or is it supposed to be, uh, <laughs> is, are they using red as a description, as a flavor? Does it taste like red? Or, I've never uh, tasted red. What does red taste like? I don't know. Red tastes like either strawberries usually or raspberry. Bleeding gums. Or bleeding gums <laughs> or, uh, or lead. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the lightning pop. Which is obviously going to be it's a Thor themed drink for the uh, to tie in with the upcoming Thor Ragnarok. Clap clap. Yes, and uh, so, but the most important thing about that is that they with the drink you can get a Thor's hammer light up cube, just like all the other light up ice cubes that you can get. This one looks like Thor's hammer, which to me next to maybe like the Death Star or the X-Wing or the Millennium Falcon is right up there as being one of the coolest of the light-up pop, light-up uh, ice cubes. They're not really ice cubes, but... Drink enhancers? What, do you, what would you call they them? They don't enhance anything. They, they just, enhance the experience. They enhance the look of it. That's about it. Yeah. But yes, Thor's hammer, a light-up little Thor's hammer. So I want it. I don't know if you have to buy the hammer or buy the drink to get the hammer. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, the, the the hammer being with the drink is going to make the drink cost twice as much as it would it should. Right. So it means it's probably ten dollars or something like that. The real question, I think, though, here is that if you get this item, will you be able to bring the hammer down? I just another Diggs, little <laughs> Diggs is cracking up. Just a little another little note. Uh, it was brought to uh, our attention today that the uh, that the headless horseman straw slash clip on thing now is available finally. That they weren't available this time apparently. So if you've been, if you've been going around the parks like Tim, looking for them, so uh, so you can resell them all over the place. No, I've had people ask me to get them for them. Right. So I mean, everybody's been looking for those, but apparently they haven't been available. So apparently they are now available finally. So if you've been looking for those, make sure you guys get over there and get them before they lose their head. I will say that I was happy to share this item that we just shared, Diggs, but I know why it said it was only one serving now. Why? Because I'm not done. I want more. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm I not into Rice Krispie treats like that. All the, you know, I don't eat them all the time, but I want more too. <laughs> that one was good, right? <laughs> it was really good. That was more, uh, it was more marshmallowy than I think the other thing. It was really good. Uh, <laughs> now I look forward to eating mine. Yo. My one serving. You know, if you can share it with me. <laughs> <laughs> I could, but I've already been sharing this stuff with you. Tell you what, why don't you let me eat the one from three years ago that you've been saving? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Would it change your mind if I remind you that it's not really three years ago? 
it's actually probably from like 2013. Oh, four years ago. So speaking of Thor, but you know, without the uh, hammer, hammer, hammer time. Well, Bringing I guess the he, hammer down. Well, I guess he has his hammer eventually. But the uh, we told you guys a couple of weeks ago, I believe, about the sneak peek of Thor coming to the Sunset Showcase Theater in DCA. Well, that will be starting this Friday, presumably today when this podcast comes out. That will be starting on Friday the 6th, and it will be over there at the Sunset Showcase Theater. Uh, it's too late now, but as predicted, they did have a AP preview of that on Thursday. We'll uh, have to let you guys know whether, there, whether the uh, gift on that was any good. Or whether it was garbage as usual. <laughs> we don't know. But uh, so make sure you guys go get over there to DCA to check that out as well. Along with all the Halloween goodness and goodies and whatnot and candy corn <laughs> death. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Looking to personalize your trip with a keepsake? Create customized buttons for birthdays, engagements, family vacations, even bridal parties, or just because. Check out ButtonsByDigs.com today. Buttons by Digs, Buttons by Digs. Remember, those are buttons, not pins. Hey, did you uh, guys hear that they are not doing an overlay for Jungle Cruise? No Jingle Cruise this what? year? Really? I'm glad I finally got to go on it then. All I know is I've been seeing people posting this from, of course, sites that don't have nothing to do with Disney. So I don't understand how they say, oh, is this true? But... I haven't seen it on the schedule for, you know, closures. Would it be on there yet? Well, um, the other ones are um, Small World's on there. so Maybe it doesn't take as much time to do or something, but I will, I'm will. i going to go so far as to say that Jingle Cruise is the second best holiday layover they have. I'm going to go and say that's. I've only seen it once, and that was last year. <laughs> I could care well, less the, about the, it. The first year, it wasn't quite as funny the jokes were basically the same jokes but it was decorated right but last year the second year that they did it i thought it was awesome they basically threw a ton of fruitcake into the, into the jungle river <laughs> and then every joke had to do with fruitcake and like how the fruit i don't know i mean I, maybe that's a generational thing you guys remember all the fruitcake jokes growing yes. up I don't know if the millennials get those same jokes, like, you know, being as the 80s, they never experienced the 80s or 90s. The millennials killed fruitcake? Is that another thing the millennials killed? Yeah, I think maybe. <laughs> uh, I just think fruitcake is like a 60s through 80s kind of thing. Um, did, did you guys go on uh, Jungle Cruise at night? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the only time. That's the only time you really should go yeah. on it. I mean, during the I day. Just wanna, real quick, I'm on November 6th. Good during the day, too. Though. I'm on November 6th, and there was no scheduled uh, closure for Jungle Cruise. I'm and still like, sad. Like I said, um, It's a Small World is on there, so and it would open, have to open on that Thursday. Well, maybe right? they decided it wasn't uh, popular enough. I don't know. I don't know either, but there was, a, there was an article saying that it said Disney um, officially says this is true or something like that. I don't know. And I read the article, and nowhere in the article did it say any source from Disney. I don't know, but like I said, it's not on the schedule. So maybe people are looking at the schedule and saying, hey, Jungle Cruise is not on the schedule for refurb or closure. So maybe that's why they're going with that. We'll see. Hey, did you know that Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man Tell No Tales is out? Yeah, on DVD. Yeah, DVD. That I think I quick. saw something in that in something about that in the old uh, ads. In the old ads, I think I saw it in the Target ad. Oh, okay, the Target ad. Target. That's where I sharp, sharp, sharp. I sharp that. Okay. Anyway, yes, Pirates is out. So head over to Target and get your copy. I'm gonna go get mine because I really enjoyed that movie. I thought it was pretty funny. I don't care what anyone says about Pirates of the Caribbean and say that, oh, it's stupid, it sucks, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you're stupid and you suck. So I love Pirates of the Caribbean. I will be getting that movie next. And guess what, Anthony? Chicken butt. No, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. I the first it. one? Yes, the first one. Well, the second one's really good, too. I don't care, because I'm not there yet. We're we're talking about the first hey, one Hey, hey, right it took him this long, one thing at a time. I'm messing with him. I'm messing with him. <laughs> and? It was funny. It's Told a good you. movie, right? That little, that little uh, 
That little pet guy is funny. Which pet guy? He's talking about Rocket. <laughs> oh, the raccoon? He's not an otter. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. You know, it's funny. He could have made himself an otter. So, yeah, Anthony, I did uh, watch it. I thought it was funny. It was pretty cool. And I do have the second one at home. Just haven't got to see it yet. Good job. I try. We mentioned on our um, D23 episode, you guys did the, the parks panel, right? I remember being there. Yeah, you remember. <laughs> it's a good thing you Yeah, remember. he was in the panel. Uh, whether he remembers everything he saw, that's a different story. <laughs> well, but... they told me, because I wasn't there, that at the parks panel, it was announced that there would be a throwback 80s um, Guardians attraction put in at the, at the Epcot Park. Yes. Walt uh, Disney World. Yes, we had announced that that it would be that it would be based off of a throwaway line in the second Guardians movie about him having gone to Epcot in the eighties when he was a kid. Oh right, right. I remember that. Oh, was that in the first one then? Oh, I don't know. I just remember something about that. Oh yeah, we talked that was in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we mentioned yeah, we that. We talked about it. Right. So so we actually got some news just the other day that actually I hadn't even really heard or I didn't really think it was that big. I was like, I think I had saw it, but then I didn't understand what it was. Well, I pulled this out, not out of one of the Disney groups, but I, uh, uh, for those that don't know, uh, my girlfriend Elizabeth and I are kind of roller coaster junkies. We travel around to different theme parks and like to ride, you know, the biggest, coolest, newest, uh, different roller coasters. And uh, um, I pulled it out of my uh, one of my roller coaster groups that they said, hey, the the new Guardians attraction that had been announced at D23, which is taking over the Ellen's Pavilion area. I believe so. Apparently, they're building a, like, 20-story building there, show building, and the attraction has been confirmed as of October 1st on Epcot's 35th. They announced that it will be a roller coaster. I never really thought about it being a roller coaster. I thought I just figured they were just going to use the same show building as uh, Ellen. And that it would just be some dark ride or some sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe like a, uh, I don't know. I mean, they got all kinds of new technologies they're trying out and stuff. Here, I have uh, actual information. It says the vice president of Epcot, uh, her name's Melissa, I can't pronounce her last name, Valaquet, uh, confirmed that the attraction is a roller coaster to members of the media at the Epcot 35 celebration on October 1st. According to sources, the roller coaster will load guests in the former Universe of Energy attraction and launch them through a tunnel into a 10-story tall show building. The coaster will reportedly be a first-of-its-kind ride system, but it remains unclear how it will differ from a conventional ride. Uh, the attraction will mark the very first roller coaster for Epcot in its 35-year history, the last remaining Disney park on Earth to not have one. <laughs> um, and I my, hadn't even thought about that. And my post uh, to um, our group in Mouse Lovers 1313 was, Great news, Epcot desperately needs more rides. As they, they legitimately had something like five attractions when we were there in 2000, uh, 2016, last year. And uh, I guess I didn't count the Ellen show <laughs> as one of the attractions. When they told me it was 45 minutes long, I said, ah, I think we'll skip that one. Yeah, I, I'm excited. We love roller coasters. I know that they've done some interesting things with coasters where they incorporate dark ride elements into the roller coasters. So, for instance, uh, Disneyland Paris, they have the Crush Coaster, and it's a... If you've ever been on Sierra Sidewinder at Knott's Berry Farm, you sit facing away from each other, and then there's like three or four of those in the car in, e in each train. Um, so you face away from each other like in a turtle shell. And then the first part of the ride is all uh, like dark ride. You know, you're going through areas, and there's, you know, all of a sudden the sharks lit up and the uh, what are the the big fish with the giant mouths, and they have that little thing that uh, looks like a little ping pong ball hanging right. from in front of their face? You know, they have like a room where you're going through a bunch of those, and then you're going up the lift hill, either facing down or facing up. Um, and I think that's where the big shark is. And then when you get to the top of the lift hill, you're not in the dark ride area anymore. Then it like it lets go, 
And just like Sierra Sidewinder at Knott's or if anybody's ever, if anybody's ever been to um, the Lagoon Amusement Park in Salt Lake City, they have one there called Spider, same kind of thing. It spins. Um, there's a new coaster. Actually, you know what? Maybe maybe they're doing something similar to the coaster that's at uh, Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri. That's um, same kind of thing where you're spinning, but it's also a launch spin. So something really interesting. But uh, anyway, the ride, as you go through it, just like on Sierra Sidewinder, the ride spins, but you're like, you're going every which way. And if you happen to get on the ride where there's nobody on the other side of you, the the ride vehicles basically spin nonstop. Uh, have you ever been on Sierra Sidewinder yeah. where you didn't have somebody behind you? No, but oh, I know because the weight. Yeah, it's you're basically heavily weighted. Like if Diggs and I were to ride on one side and there was nobody behind <laughs> us, the ride would basically just go in a constant spin to the point where you come off like you can't walk. <laughs> uh, anyway, it, it could be fun if they have something like that. I know Crush Coaster is like one of the most loved attractions and. Uh, I think the second rated attraction in all of Disneyland Paris um, over Space Mountain in Paris. Uh, I think Big Thunder Mountain is the only higher rated attraction that they have in that part in either of their parks there. And uh, it's nowhere else. They haven't put it anywhere. So maybe something like that. Um, but I'm all for new ride systems and something that's different. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they got to do something different than the Tron because they're already adding the Tron coaster t- right. next to Space Mountain over there. People in Florida got that to look forward to. I mean, once that, I don't know. They didn't put any opening date. I think with did with Tron, did they put an opening date? The Tron coaster? No, it was uh, early 2020s. They wanted it by the time Walt well, Disney World has its 50th. 50th. All right. Hey, you know what time it is? Howdy duty time? No. Oh. It's time for stupid questions. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we My have favorite. A, we have a few of them since we didn't uh, get uh, have a show last week. Here's one. This one says someone told me that the special Halloween parade is only done on the nights where folks have to pay the extra money to trick or treat in the park. Do they do this other nights as well? Didn't this person just answer the question how, yeah. on the nights that they have yeah. I think that's what they call a circle jerk. <laughs> what the hell? All right, next so question. He answered his own question in the question. Yes, he did. This uh this one classic. Need five tickets for a Halloween party on October thirteenth. Anyone have some to spare? But he needs five? <laughs> yeah, because you know we all just buy extra tickets just to, you know, cover those people who might need them eventually. I mean Because you know, tickets are so cheap that it'd just be like Oh, yeah, I'm just going to buy 10 even though I only need two, right? I mean, I considered purchasing them as an investment to, like, resell, but you'd have to just stick them on StubHub or something, right? Because, I mean, if you try to sell them otherwise, people are just going to complain that they're even more expensive. Right. The last one here is um, you might have to think about this one, think about an answer. I don't know. It's kind of late. It might be tough, okay? Okay. This one, this question is, when is California school's Thanksgiving break. Wait, can you say that one more time? <laughs> when is California school's Thanksgiving break? What does that have to do with Disneyland? Okay, first of all, yeah, that would be my question. What does that have to do with Disneyland? Well, because everyone wants to go during, you know, that time. Second so, of all, you know what? I, we don't even need to. We don't even need to <laughs> dignify. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, we're not really answering the question for these people, but I mean, yeah, it's just like, um, uh. <laughs> I mean, is there any other states where Thanksgiving is different? <laughs> is it a different day? I mean, in Canada? No. Uh, well, <laughs> hold on a second. I mean, are they? I mean, if they're they're off over the Thanksgiving, right? I mean, what is she? Is she? Do you think they're asking if they're off the whole week versus only the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Or they're just asking Thursday, California Friday? schools. So, in other words, they're trying to imply that they don't know if California schools have the same time off. For Thanksgiving is what apparently schools in other states. Well, we have districts here. Every district's different. Well, yeah, exactly. But almost everybody throughout history has already always gotten Thursday through Monday, or Thursday Sunday. through Sunday. I think our I think in the Long Beach school district they're off the whole week. Well, yeah, I mean that may be. Things have changed it, since we've been in school. Well, yeah, I we know. only got two days off. I know. 
Hey, it's mail time. Well, yes, it is. And uh, our first email is from returning emailer Giselle. She uh, went to the Mickey's Halloween party. And this is what she has to say about it. She says, hi, friends. Okay, so my boyfriend and I went to the Halloween party on the 20th. That's the first night? Yes. And I loved it. The park was kind of empty because everyone was in line for all the candy. My top priority was to take pictures. So we took one in front of the pumpkin, Mickey Mouse pumpkin, that is. And when we went to check on the AP section, it was basically just a line to take pictures in front of a different backdrop. The line was super long. I was told by a cast member that we had until the end of the night, but when we came back, they were gone. Of course they are. They're going to tell you that, you know what, you can come, you know, we're here till the party's over, but they wrap that up real quick, you know. They're not going to stay there all night long. They lie. We found a bench on the street in front of Jolly Holiday, and while we knew we wouldn't be able to see the parade, we had perfect seats for the fireworks. Hey, that's pretty cool. Fireworks are the best thing about the Halloween party. Yeah, they actually didn't start until about 9.50, and then a buttload of people came and stood right in front of us, so I missed the projections. I did see Zero fly across the castle, though. That was cool. Hey, we heard the we heard the fireworks last night. <laughs> <laughs> Dapper Dan's were awesome. The fog over the river was amazing. I think the whole New Orleans area was the most themed and gave off gave off the most Halloween vibe. All things considered, I loved it. Now that I've been and know how everything works and where everything is placed, I have a good idea of what not to do when I go on the sixth. When we were there on Friday 22nd, and they did the announcement for the park to close. They said that there were still tickets available for a Halloween party that night, which was true because I believe that's the only one that they said they have had they had tickets available for. I thought that the Wednesday, the first night, was the last one left. No. So the, so the Friday didn't sell out, the first Friday? Right. I, th- I think that's why I, I posted. Wasn't that the day I posted that they had tickets left? Yeah. I believe it was that Friday. Hmm. I was so tempted to go buy them. <laughs> Just finished episode 104. Can't wait to see DCA. Sounds like a good time. Hope you get your buckets for $15. And happy late birthday, Diggs. Well, thank you. And Dirty Award goes to that cast member who told me I could get my picture later. I should have just waited in line. <laughs> exactly. Never believe the cast members. But she did send us a picture of her and her boyfriend in front of Mickey. Aww. Pumpkin, that's pretty cool. Hey, they got the daytime photo. That's a good one. It's actually dusk, right? It's more like dusk. Yeah, probably. That's... Yes, never believe the cast member. Uh, one of my favorite sayings is, how can you tell if a <laughs> cast member is lying? And Diggs knows the answer to this question. Their mouth moves. Yes, their mouth <laughs> is moving. <laughs> that's when you know they're lying. All right, Giselle, thank you for your email. Glad that you enjoyed the party. And hope you have fun at the next one. Lucky you. Well, she's clearly a baller. She's going more than once. I know. I'm not going at any time. All right. Next email is from Jeff Beaumont. This is Disneyland Part 3 of 3. Remember he left us hanging last time? Oh, yeah. All right. Now about Disneyland. I met my best friend and her family there. We have known each other since 1985. On that day, the two of us went around like kids again, just at a slower pace. <laughs> The only weird part that happened that day was nothing. Okay. It was a beautiful day, and we were at Disneyland. Everything past the berms did not exist. Has anyone else felt that way at Disneyland? I used to. Really? What, like that you're just in this special place? I guess. Huh? Anything, oh, okay, anything yeah. Anything outside the right, berms right, just, right. just fades away. We just had a great day at Disneyland, and the real world was just a memory. That is the magic of Walt Disney. Well, that's true. Until you go over to um, Tomorrowland, and you hear the sirens going down Harbor. Right. <laughs> or until you look down Main Street, and you see the uh, monstrosity as it is the uh, Guardian's Tower across inside uh, DCA. I guess, but <laughs> I always you always hear those sirens in Tomorrowland. You, you can, yeah. The traffic. All right. Thank you for your email, Jeff. Thanks for the conclusion you... Left those hanging last time. 
All right, next email is from Dan the Man. His subject line is, anyone have Halloween party tickets? <laughs> yeah, I got one for you, Dan. I'm going to meet you outside on Harbor Boulevard at the Captain Kids um, this Tuesday. What time? You pick the time. I'll, I'll just meet you there. <laughs> All right, Mouse Pyre, finally back. Got to DCA to see the incredible Halloween decorations. No way I saw all of it, so I need to go back for another adventure. Managed to take advantage of a lot of photo ops. Busy at work, busy at home means I haven't hit the park much. Feeling like Michael the Mail Guy in the summertime. Hopefully, uh, he'll get a chance, he says, to get there this weekend. And if not, then next weekend for sure. And hopefully, we can catch up. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I, I talked to him actually. Uh, trying to figure out when he's going to go so we can probably meet up when he does. Question, how much candy do you have left from the Halloween party and what did you decide not to miss? You may have answered that second question already. Why do you think Disney decided to play music from Tim Burton's movies on Buena Vista Street? Simply the Danny Elfman, The Nightmare Before Christmas connection. I swear I heard music from Pee-wee's Big Adventure until next time, Dan out. You know, it's funny that he says that because uh, I did notice that on Buena Vista Street they were playing. I didn't notice them playing. Was that just during the park, right? Just in the park? Yeah. Because they are playing stuff that's not Disney music. It's kind of like over there by the Grand Californian where all that music that's from uh, what used to be, obviously, uh, Grizzly Peak Airfield. Anyways, all that music that plays from the corner over there by the plane and around, all that music that's not Disney. Oh, right, right, right. That's right. non Disney property music that uh, I've always thought that was weird that they play all that music over there that's not Disney from all the way from there by Soren and all the way around the corner. They play music that's not Disney music. Hmm. Does anybody else remember when they used to play uh, the non Disney music in the Hollywood area? Yes, yeah, kind of. Yeah. It was like Hollywood music. <clears throat> well, it was. It was like TV show theme songs yeah. and stuff. I mean, I, yeah. rem- I remember hearing the the theme for Star Trek Voyager oh, really? being played interesting. in the in that area. More than once I heard it, too. But anyways, the other day when we were there, the day I got the, uh, the uh, apple lemonade drink, I noticed they were playing the music from uh, Gremlins oh. in the... Uh, Cafe Courtyard, I was listening. I'm like, dude, that's the music from Gremlins. And then there was something else when we came when we came back through that area on the way out. There was another piece of music, and I'm like, hey, that's something else that was that, that I didn't I didn't remember what it was. I don't remember what it was, but it was something else that was definitely non Disney. But I was like, oh, then that must have definitely been Gremlins. I heard earlier because I uh, yeah so. It's interesting that they say that they've heard only Danny Elfman stuff. That's not Disney, but it's, uh, yeah, that's weird. Um, as far as um, how much candy I have left, I... Not enough. Exactly. I didn't uh, get to actually get to my point when I was talking about my candy, but I, uh, Disney bag, you know, they give you a little Disney bag. I filled it up, and then I threw half of it into my backpack, and then I ended up filling it up again. So basically one and a half bags of candy I got. And of that, what is left is probably a bag of candy. <laughs> I've been eating not a lot. Fernando, don't get mad. Stop yelling at me. Okay. I haven't been eaten that much, maybe three pieces a day. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I probably have about a, a bag of candy and two uh, bags of apples in the refrigerator. No, one bag of apples in the refrigerator. I ate the other one. So, yeah, and what did I not miss? I would probably just say the fireworks. I wanted to watch the fireworks. Wasn't going to sit in front of the castle and try to get a spot this year. So my plan was just to go over to Small World area and watch it there. That's probably about it with what I, you know, didn't miss or what I had to see. All right, thank you for your email, Dan. Hope to see you in the park soon. And, you know, he says he's been busy, but I saw pictures of him at a field trip. That must be so hard to go on a field trip, you know, because it's so much work to go on a field trip. <laughs> you don't have to be at the school and chill <laughs> at some other school. <laughs> and, okay, you guys, guess what? There's no email 
from Michael the Dirty Mail Guy. You know what would make that what? You know what that makes it what makes that even more dirty is the fact that we didn't record last week, so he should have had an email for us for last week because we kind of canceled kind of late. And the fact that he doesn't have an email again this week, I know you're moving. I don't want to hear your bullshit excuses. <laughs> I'm because go we've so been far as to say we've been over fired. it. We've been over it time and time again about how it takes it. You could bust out an email in two minutes. No, even if we've and we've been over with Michael time and time again that if he doesn't have time, at least just send us a Michael's tip of the week. I'm gonna go so far as to say fired temporarily. You heard it. Temporarily fired, Mike. All right, so thank you for your emails. Giselle, Jeff, Dan, the man, if you guys have any questions, comments, your own tip of the week, if you want to be hired as a new mail guy, all you have to do is email us. Massfire at gmail.com. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Looking to personalize your trip with a keepsake? Create customized buttons for birthdays, engagements, family vacations, even bridal parties, or just because. Check out ButtonsByDigs.com today. Buttons by Digs. Buttons by Digs. Remember, those are buttons, not in. Bye. Not yet. Oh. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Mouse Power Podcast. Welcome back, Cotter. I mean, Tim. Hey. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. I know that guy. Uh, yes, yes. We do know each other. <laughs> it's been some time now. One of those Facebook, you know, you've been friends for so long, things should be popping up soon, I think. Anyway, yeah, so, um, hey, we're back, and hopefully we get to the parks. I don't have a scheduled day on when I'm going to be there next. I don't know about Anthony. I know Anthony wants to get the Headless Horseman keychain thing. Eventually. So I don't know when I'm going to go. I, I really do want to go soon because I do want to try all those delicious treats. They're, they have my name on them. And I got to go over there and pick them up and eat them. I think I actually did see one literally had your name on it. See, there you go. I need, still need to get there and pick it up. And it wasn't the Popeye. <laughs> Thank you. And I also want to try that lemonade. It sounds really good. It is good. Okay, then. So maybe when I go, I buy two. Give me two of those. That'd be cool. I'm, I'm See, now you got me all hungry and thirsty. <laughs> Well, hopefully you guys can make it over to the parks and you guys can try all those delicious Halloween snacks and foods and drinkage. Don't forget if anybody has gone to Mickey's Halloween party or is planning to go and you guys want to let us know about your experiences just like Giselle did, then make sure you guys email us, mousepire at gmail.com, subject line, Mickey's Halloween party. Yes, we would love to hear your stories and, and hear what you thought of it and how much of a good time you had or a bad time you had or whatever your experience was. We're, we're going to be especially interested in people who have their parties later in the month to see if they do relax their rules a little bit on the candy and everything to see if it maybe it is a product of being an early date. Like I said, it does feel weird to have, well, it feels weird to not go, first of all, for me, but it must feel weird for Diggs to, to already have gone. Yeah, to have it out of the yeah, way already. When, no, that's weird. When the lad, all the previous years we had been going, like somewhere around the seventeenth or so. We like to go in October. You know, we like to go you know, during the Halloween time. You know, right now it's just it was just September. You know, and that's when I went on the twenty seventh. But with the prices going up, we had to get the best deal we could. So seventy five dollars. Exactly. Seventy five dollars was a good deal for us, and there was like well only two nights available for seventy five. So we had to take it. You know, October is when the trees start to smell funny. Especially and it's on the also right when you start to smell funny. Well, that's true. <laughs> that, was <laughs> easy. that was too easy. <laughs> All right, so don't forget to go check out Thor down in his Ragnarok. Yes, check out the preview over Down there. in Ragnarok. That sounds, I mean, the just down the Down in Ragnarok. The f- All right, so yeah, make sure you head over to the Sunset Showcase Theater and check out that preview. When I get to the parks next, I'll go check that out. I, yes, that is it, on the list, definitely. And it's on three. It's it is in three D, right? Yes, it is. Okay, so hey, that's another plus. When's the movie come out? The movie comes out November sixth, I believe. That is just too long. That's a month from the basically first, from a month from the day after first tomorrow. First Thor movie. I'm kind of excited to see. It is actually the first Thor movie. I'm really excited to see because the Hulk's in. It. Because it has a it has a Guardians vibe to it. Because I guess it's in space. So, yeah, I and see they that. get that whole they have that whole retro kind of 80s vibe to it also 
I don't know why, but yeah, I like the whole retro vibe of it. And it seems funny, like how Guardians movies, the Guardians movies are funny. So let us know what you think of that. Milesbuyer, gmail.com. So at some point, we're going to go see it, and then you can find out what we thought of it on our social medias. Of course, Milesbuyer on Facebook, at Milesbuyer on the Twitters and the Instagrams. I am at Dubex for the number four life on Twitter. Uh, check us out on Mouse Lovers 1313 on Disney Facebook group. You should join. Just uh, search Mouse Lovers 1313 on Facebook. And if you needed to reach me for some reason, I'm the only one on Facebook whose name is Tim Fresh hyphen one. Chicka chicka. Fresh. That's me. <laughs> right, you can follow me on Instagram, Baloo 1313. And also follow Buttons by Diggs on Instagram. There you will see when your button order is going out. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Head over to YouTube, search Miles Power Podcast, or just go to Facebook and click the link there. Subscribe to our page just like Jason Cooley did. Yes, thank you, Jason, for subscribing. Head over there, check out the videos, like them, and like I said, subscribe. Also, don't forget to help support the podcast. Head over to patreon.com slash mousepire. Any amount will do. You can become a member of our Patreon family just like Scott, Fernando, Stephanie, and Fancy Nancy. So head over to patreon.com slash mousepire. Help support the podcast. Buttons, not pins. And until next time, remember, you can say all you want that something is pumpkin spice, but that doesn't make it true. So for Chef Oscar, Harry Kim, and the great Tom Petty, I'm Anthony. I'm Tim. I'm Diggs. Bye. Bye. I won't back down. This podcast is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. Audio, sound bites, and other clips are property of their copyright holders. All original stuff is ours and property of mousepire.com. My body. Ah, been, yeah, not, 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 not like that. Not quite so loud. Uh, that's fantastic. Yes. The Monster Mash. Monsters After Dark. I ran out of breath at the end.